today we are taking a look at a DOS classic that spawned many 3D mech games. This is MechWarrior from 1989. The second video game released in the Battletech series. MechWarrior was the first video game to offer the player a chance to pilot a battle mech from the view of a pilot. With this game, the player has a great deal of freedom when compared to many of the follow-up MechWarrior games, which includes choosing missions, buying and selling mechs and parts, hiring landsmates and travelling throughout the inner sphere. Underneath the major game mechanics, the player had the option of following a role-playing style story arc that would unfold over five in-game years. The story follows a mech warrior by the name of Gideon Braver Vandenberg. His family have been murdered, and the chalice that proves he is the heir to the throne of his planet and moon has been stolen. Without the chalice, he is exiled. Gideon must develop a force of mech warriors and battle mechs, find those who committed the acts against his family, and take his revenge within five years or all is lost. Looking at MechWarrior these days, it certainly hasn't aged well, with its basic 3D world, slow movement and crude graphics. But do remember that this game is pretty much responsible for all those mech titles that followed. A few years later, MechWarrior got ported to Japanese computers with a vastly improved graphical interface. Let's start off with the Sharp X68000 version, which was released in 1992, known as Battletech Ubawarita Seihai. This port by Cross Media Soft improves upon the original in so many ways. The game now has an opening story that explains the plot to the game rather than just throwing you in without any background as to why you are in the situation you are in. We also get a much needed graphical overhaul in presentation, yet remaining very true to the original DOS version. The main interface has remained the same, however, we now get a pretty cool training mode that randomly generates battles for you to partake in. Talking of which, your mech now moves much faster with more fluid controls. It's still dated by modern standards and the control system via the keyboard is the same as the DOS release, but overall it is an improvement upon the original. In 1993, Cross Media Soft also ported a version of MechWarrior to NEC's PC-98 series of home computers. This version is basically a tidy up of the X68000 version. Some of the opening on the X68000 used assets from the DOS game, whereas on this port they've been redrawn. The in-game worlds seem more solid here as well. Even the menu system has new art and tweaks here and there. There's also a lot more mech options to choose from. 
possibly this could be the best incarnation of the original MechWarrior. We do have one more port though. In 1993, the Super Famicom got a port known as Battletech in Japan and MechWarrior in the West. This game is based upon the original PC MechWarrior, but rather than giving us ultra poor slow polygons, this version uses Mode 7 for the Battletech mission sequences instead of the PC's flat shaded 3D graphics. In a way, this actually works quite well. The game is responsive and, well, just works. Sure, the areas are a lot more restrictive now, with the world being flat and the map area being a fraction of the size of the PC maps, but still, it does play like MechWarrior. What is interesting is that the Western and Japanese versions use different art assets that I'll show you in the side-by-side -side comparison in a minute. But what that comparison will not show you is just how much more difficult the Japanese version is compared to the Western release. In the Japanese version, your mech just isn't as strong, taking far more damage from any attacks. Or at least it seems that way. Let's take a look at all those versions of MechWarrior running side by side. 